This is PsychBoost helping you with your psychology qualification one video at a time. This video is on perception and in this fourth GCSE video we'll be covering visual illusions. So the very kind support of students and teachers who donate on Patreon help me help you by continuing to make these videos and resources. A very big thank you for your help guys to join them for the link. For everyone you might want to check out the free worksheet for this video and the quiz. So I imagine you're here to study GCSE psychology. So here are the terms on the AQA GCSE specification we're going to cover in this video. As we go through the video, they'll be in red text. So you need to be able to respond to questions on all of this. If you're not doing GCSE, well, you might still find this interesting. So before we start looking at some visual illusions, let's clarify two definitions. We need to understand the difference between sensation and perception. So, we have sense organs and they detect information about the world outside of our brain. The detection of that information is sensation. But that information after detection is then processed by the brain. It's organised and it's interpreted to make sense of what we've just detected. That is perception. And some psychologists argue that what we perceive is often very different from what originally came to the senses. To clarify the difference, Sensation is about the detection of actual information and perception is about interpretation. So let's look at the visual illusion, starting with the Ponzo. This is a pair of converging parallel lines that look a little bit like a railway track. But both of the red lines are the same size. The one at the top appears bigger. To show you, I'll move the top one down. Next, the Muller Lyre. Here are two identical lines, but at the end there are arrows pointing either in or out. Again, the top line should appear bigger, but when I move it down, you can see it's just the same length. This illusion is called the Rubens vase. The image should either look to you like a vase or two faces looking at each other. Your brain should be able to switch back and to between each perspective. Now we have the Ames room. This is a three-dimensional structure that's built so that from just one perspective, it looks like a normal room. However, people within it appear to be growing larger or smaller as they move around the room. The reason for this is all the angles within the room are distorted. It only looks like a normal room from that one perspective. The mind assumes that the room is normal and the person must be changed in size. We also have the Kinder Triangle. This is a set of shapes. Three circles, missing sections, and three arrow-shaped lines. This should be producing the illusion of a triangle in the centre of the shapes that's a little lighter than the background. And finally, the neck a cube. This is the drawing of the outline of a cube. You should be able to see this in two ways. As having the bottom square facing out or the top square facing out. And your brain can switch between both perspectives. To explain how these visual illusions work, we need to think about how your mind makes sense of the information received by the visual system. Visual cues are the tricks the brain uses to understand from limited information how objects and collections of objects are related to each other in three-dimensional space. Consistencies are the way the brain sees objects as the same, despite changes in perspective and size. So imagine you're walking up to and around a building. You see it as the same building even though it gets bigger and looks different from each side. Let's talk about some of those cues. So some cues are called monocular. What this means is we only need one eye to judge them and then assume features like depth or distance. Let's start with height in a plane. When an object is higher up compared to other objects, we assume it's further away. So if I move the light blue person up, your perspective may change seeing him as further away. Another monocular depth cue is relative size. I've drawn these people in decreasing size, given the impression that the smallest is further away. The largest tree is bigger than the mountain, but we also use experience of objects to judge distance. So we assume the mountain is much larger than the trees, but further away. Another monocular depth cue is occlusion. If an object is covered by another object, we assume it's behind it. So if I reverse the occlusion of the trees in this picture, the image suddenly makes much less sense. One final monocular depth cue is linear perspective. Our brains assume that converging parallel lines and objects along them are receding back into the distance. So those are monocular depth cues. 
but the brain also uses the fact that we have two eyes detecting visual information to make assumptions about depth and distance. So if you hold your finger in front of your face and then focus on that, and then focus on something further away, you can probably feel your eyes moving together to refocus. That's because the closer an object is to your eyes, the more your eyes needed to turn inwards to focus on it. So the brain can use information from the eye muscles to judge the distance of objects. Also, as we have two eyes that are slightly separated, both pick up a slightly different image. The brain then merges these two images together to make one image of the world. But as objects that are further away or in similar positions in both versions, compared to objects that are closer, the mind uses that information to judge distance. You can see this for yourself. Again, using just your finger. Hold it close to your eyes and then open and close each eye quickly. You should see that your finger jumps from side to side. Objects on the other side of the room though shouldn't move as much. So let's match some of the aspects of perception that we've just learned to the visual illusions. We would say that all visual illusions take advantage of the fact that the brain's perception of the world is based on assumptions from limited visual information. It makes assumptions on size based on experience of objects and assumes far away objects are smaller than closer ones. This is called size consistency. The brain can be incorrect in assuming size consistency because it's misinterpreted these depth cues. And we can see examples of misinterpreted depth cues in the Ponzo, the Muller Liar, and the Ames Room. Ambiguity is when the brain doesn't have any of the visual cues that suggest features like depth or distance. So there isn't really a correct way of perceiving an image and the brain just kind of jumps back and forth between interpretations. Rubens vase and the Necker cube are both examples of ambiguous visual illusions. Finally, the Kinzer triangle is an example of a fiction. The brain perceives something that isn't detected by the senses. Now that we've covered the content, you need to be able to use all that information to actually answer questions. So here are five questions I've made to test your skills. So pause the video and give them a go. For those of you who support me on Patreon, I've put together a bonus video showing you how to answer these properly. And for everybody else, thanks for watching this. Like, subscribe. I'll see you on the next video in Perception, Theories of Perception.